be blessed forever and ever. Shalom, everyone. Uh, today, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're starting a series of classes um, about Passover, Pesach, with halachot and some other information about this beautiful month. Um, you know, we're not supposed only to learn about the halachot of the month, but a little bit about the month itself, uh, uh, the significance of these uh, days uh, as a preparation for um, Passover itself and the Seder night. It's probably one of the most busiest and, um, and um, a month of the year uh, on, and a holiday of the year. So, <coughs> I'm going to quote from Orchot Chaim of Rabenu Asher. A Jew must trust in God with all his heart. And he must believe that he watches every step taken by every person in the world. Someone who does not believe in the statement, quote, I took you out from the land of Egypt, end quote, cannot believe in the statement, quote, I am God, the Almighty, end of quote. This is what makes Israel unique among the nations, and it is a basic principle of the entire Torah. So, before we start with the beautiful halachot about the month of uh, Nisan, that's just around the corner, within uh, a week and a half or so, we have plenty of mitzvot ahead of us, the blessing of the trees, the blossoming trees. And we're going to share today at least one, maybe two zgulot uh, of this special mount. Preparing oneself during the days before Pesach. The season of Purim and the Pesach is a time of ascent for the entire nation of Israel. Our sages taught, this is in Tractate Ta'anit, page 21a. 29a, with the advent of the month of Adar, we increase joyful activities. Rashi explained that this is the period when many miracles were uh, wrought on behalf of the nation of Israel, such as those of Purim and Pesach. It is clear, therefore, that the occasion of Pesach is one of joy for our people, no less than that of Purim. So what's so joyful on uh, Passover? We know on Purim, we're celebrating, we're drinking. I hope you had a good uh, celebration of Purim. I know I did, Baruch Hashem. So let's see, leavened bread, which we call chametz. Anytime we mention the word chametz, probably all of you knows the meaning of chametz. It's a leavened bread is representative of the evil impulses deep within the person's soul. The nation of Amalek, representative the, the physical manifestation of those uh, impure impurities, acts of sin. Purim is a time when the nation of Israel overcome the nation of Amalek, led by Haman, and shed themselves of their sins. The task of the nation of Israel during the weeks following Purim is to in, uh, integrate that uh, uh, cleansing and overcome the, impulse, the, the impulses for evil that lurk deep with, uh, within our consensus. Okay, let me, let me just skip all this reading. Bottom line, we understand that the concept of of, of, of uh, the concept is, is, is represented by our energy spent in ridding our home from every speck of chametz. And by special halachot that we learn about chametz, we can learn that it's not just uh, 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 crumbs of bread that we are trying to get rid of. Chametz represents something. How we, going, how we get chametz? Is flour chametz? Flour is a chametz. Flour is not chametz. No, yeast. Yeast is chametz. 
Water is chametz. What's chametz? The mix of water, yeast, and, 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 and flour. Only water and flour. When it raises, if the, the, the dough rests over 18 minutes, it becomes chametz. After the 18 minutes, it becomes chametz. Okay? What makes it chametz? When it raises. Raises chametz represent pride. When one raises himself above other people, full of pride, versus being humble, put yourself down. So we're trying to get rid of not only the physical chametz, but the spiritual chametz within us, which is the evil inclination. Before many sins, the evil inclination telling you, you better, should not talk to you, talk to you like that. You know better than them. And so forth and so on. It convinces you that you are superior to all your surroundings. And this is a key for sin. So bottom line, uh, uh, Pesach, or the preparation for getting rid of the chametz, can lead us to uh, humbleness. And then we come before Hashem, after we get rid of not only the physical chametz that we, also, we all uh, worry about, but most importantly probably the, 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 the spiritual chametz. Okay, and this is something good to do the whole year, by the way. Okay. One more small part that I want to share with you from this uh, introduction to the laws of Passover. The nation of Israel was born when it was freed from the bonds of slavery in Egypt. God orchestrated the exodus so that it will serve as the basis for the nation's faith and belief in him as a creator and master of the entire world. The Exodus itself proved unequivocally to the nation of Israel that this is so. For this reason, when God revealed himself to the nation uh, at Mount of Sinai, he did not introduce himself as the creator, creator of the world. Instead, he used the statement, listen to this, Hashem appearing before the entire world. Israel can see him. The entire world can hear him. They can hear him around the Mount of Sinai and Egypt itself. All the nations, seven nations in the land of Israel. People that live in Japan and China and Guatemala, South America, North America. Everybody that lives there. Back then the Indians in, in North America and everyone in Canada can hear the voice that comes from Hashem from the Mount of Sinai. And Hashem instead of saying, I am the creator of the world. What did Hashem say? Hashem says, I am Hashem, your God who took you out from the land of Egypt. Everybody heard that Hashem is talking to his nation. And that day we become his nation from the house of slavery. Again, I am Hashem, your God, who took you out from the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery. So, coming out of the house of slavery, receiving the Torah, accepting every words of the Torah, the written Torah and the oral Torah, that what makes us free from slavery. You want to be servant of God, not a servant of people. The entire nations of the world heard that they got a chance to receive the Torah beforehand when Hashem bring a prophecy to their prophets. They share that, their prophets, they share that with their people. And they refuse every nation from its own, with his own reasons. Only Israel said, we'll accept we will do and we will hear. Hashem, we don't ask questions. Give, give us the Torah. The, the, the nation of Israel never asked what is written in it. Let's talk about it. Let's schedule a meeting for next week. Let me get back with you. Don't call us. We call you. No. If it comes from Hashem, it must be perfect. 
as we said, Naase Venishma. Hashem, just give it to us. Okay. The introduction is really, really long. I'm going to skip to the core of the halacha. And I hope Bezrat Hashem, thank you. I hope Bezrat Hashem that we will be able to cover all of them. Um, let me share with you one zgula. Before we start for the laws of the month of Nisan. First of all, we all know which one is the, which month is called the Rosh Chodesh, the head of uh, Rosh Chodesh. Some will tell you Nisan. According to the Torah, the first month is Nisan. But we count, we look at the calendar, every calendar, you look at any calendar you have at home, you see that the first month is Tishrei. Okay, so what's going on? It's Tishrei or Nisan. So, very simple. The year, the years are counted from Nisan, from um, Tishrei. Years counted from Tishrei. When, creation. from creation, since creation of this world. So it's called Rosh Hashanah the head of the year. Okay, Tishrei is the head of the year or the head of the years. But the month of Nisan is the Rosh, is the head of the month. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. According to the Talmud, there's four different kind of head of the month. Arba'a, as the Talmud says, Arba'a Rashi Shanim. There's four different, four one for Truma Masra, one for monet monetary uh, um, issues and stuff like that. But bottom line, Tishrei counts actually the years and Nisan, the months. It's the month that we become as a nation. And this, when we mark, when the Torah marked this month as the first month, is related to this significant event that happens. When the whole world heard, in this month, you become my nation, the nation of Israel. Therefore, this is your first month of the year. Okay, this is just an introduction. First Segula, there is um, a Segula if you don't want to have a headache the whole year. You ever heard about something like that? No. If you do that... You're having it right now? Oh, especially for you. people that suffer from migraines, people who suffer. No more, no need the uh, medication anymore, huh? I've had a headache for like three hours. Three hours? Okay, so there's something you can do really, really soon. And Be'ezrat Hashem, Reb Chaim Zonenfeld, Tzaddik, great Tzaddik from the of Israel, passed away. He said, if you do this segula, very simple to do. And you have in mind, and you say it, I'm doing it for so and so, it's guaranteed you have no headaches the entire year. Please do that, and let's talk about it after that during the year. Let's see, Baruch Hashem, if it works. Okay? People testifying that it works unbelievably, surprisingly, or not. What is to, what to do? You know, there's many mitzvot that we do every uh, uh, week, every day almost, for the sake of Shabbat, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm buying, I don't know, meat. I said, this is a great piece of meat. I will save it for Shabbat. So he's saying, before, when you go to the market, supermarket, this is beautiful meat for the children, long stew. I'm going to buy it. You're careless about the price. Hashem brings you back. Why? Because you said it's for the sake of Shabbat food, any type of food, fruit, uh, clothing, shoe, whatever you buy, suit for the sake of Shabbat, Hashem will give it back. Okay, that's the one. There's some mitzvot that you do for the sake of Yom Tov, of a holiday. You do that, and you say, you have to say it, I'm doing it for the sake of Yom Tov. Even if people cleaning up the house, I'm cleaning the house for the sake of Shabbat. You get extra mitzvah for that. Because you're putting intention that the action you're doing is order, in order to honor the Shabbat. 
that Hashem gave us as a gift. The honor to, the honor, to honor the, the, the Yom Tov, the holiday, and so forth and so on. So there's one mitzvah if you do it, you can do it once a year. It's a remedy, it's a segula for no more headaches. What is it? It's on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, which is this year on uh, April 8th. April 8th, check it out. Rosh Chodesh Nisan, April 8th. You just take a haircut. Take a haircut and you say, I'm taking this haircut for the sake and for the honor of Passover. The holiday of Passover. Man and woman. Man and woman, children, all is good. Okay, Reb Chaim Zunfeld says, you dedicate this haircut for the sake of that holiday. And you say, for Rosh Chodesh for the sake of the Chag. That's the first Segula. Second Segula, we will talk in a minute. And that will be for Parnassah, for livelihood. Also something very interesting. You know, maybe I have to start because it's, uh, there's a story with it. Let's, let's do the first halacha. Any questions before we moving on? Anybody on the Zoom? Anybody in the class? Cut it. Cut it. Before you cut it, that's what you're saying, okay? Don't say any bracha. Don't mention Hashem's name, especially if you do it in the shower or in a place. It's not appropriate to mention Hashem's name, okay? From the night. The night. What day was is it? Is it Tuesday? I think it's the eighth, yeah. It's the what, what day is it? Monday, I think. Right, Monday, right? Monday night. Please check it out. Okay. Monday night. Wonderful. So Monday night on April 8th. It's after nightfall. Anybody and check your own time when nightfall, then you can do it right after. So we study and review the halachot of Pesach for 30 days before the festivals begins. Can you imagine that? In the midst of celebrating Purim, you have one book in the right hand, and you have one whiskey uh, glass in the left hand. You take a sip, and you study the laws of uh, Pesach. This is about Judaism, studying and learning all the time, especially for this holiday that has so many halachot combined. And you have to prepare yourself before Haggadah. We get to it. So you don't uh, stutter during the Seder. Don't, uh, I mean, prepare yourself. You have guests coming in. You have people that you want to share words of Torah. Prepare some good questions. This is a uh, very, very unique days. As Hashem will learn about it uh, in, the, in the next classes. Okay. Um, so we study and review the Nachot of Pesach 30 days before the festival begins or from Purim Day and onward. Nevertheless, this is not an absolute requirement. A Torah scholar may continue his regular study schedule in whatever area of Torah he desires. So let's say you have schedule to study Talmud, to study Halachot. So now he says, hey, the Halacha Shulchan Aruch says, you have to study 30 days. I, I can't squeeze it in. What should I do? I get nervous. So the Allah says, you're Talmud Chacham, you're a scholar. You already have scheduled words of Torah. Okay, so for you, you can do it later. But random people, regular people, they don't study Torah 8, 10 day, hours a day in the Kolel or in the Yeshiva, must study the laws of Pesach at least 30 days before Passover. Study every day, two, three, four, halacha, that's it. It takes you four minutes, five minutes. Okay? Um, the oblique, the, okay, so, that, it's a special month that we don't, we skip uh, tahanun. Um, throughout the month of Nisan, we omit the tahanun passages from our prayers. Since the entire month, uh, marks the anniversary of our celebrations in the past, of our present and of our future. Okay, the tabernacle, the Mishkan in the desert was first erected on the first day of Nisan 
And the people celebrated its inauguration for 12 days. Every president of the tribe brought his own um, uh, sacrifice, and it was a holy day for him, a special day. The whole, the entire Israel celebrated with him. There's another segula, we'll discuss what to read on these 12 days. Um, okay. There's another segula for Parnassah to light 10 candles, I'm sorry, 10 candles, uh, it's another segula, I'll give you something simple. There's a segula to light one candle for the sake of Rabbi Nisim Hamitziri. Rabbi, Rabbi Nisim Hamitziri. Mitzri, the Egyptian. Nisim. What's so special about that? This is, you heard about it? Yeah. Okay, it's a segula for Parnassah. The story happens many years ago. when it was a great, great tzaddik, pious Hasid, that he was very, very poor. Passover came, and his family and his kids told him, Abba, I have nothing for the Passover, for the Chag. Everyone's getting ready. And they were pushing him, pushing him every day to bring some uh, uh, merchandise, to bring some, some food. They have nothing at home. They, were, they live in poverty. For us, it's a little bit hard to imagine uh, poverty, Baruch Hashem. But many, many years ago, people lived like that. Many people, unfortunately. They didn't have no social security to, to support them. And it's not about... We're living day today in the days of uh, Shefa and abundance. Everything we want, we drive to a supermarket, five minutes driving, we get everything we want. Back then... If you want to have meat in many places, you have to buy the animal and do the shechita yourself, if you know how, or go to the rabbi. You have to do many things physically. Okay? You have to prepare with uh, wood chips and, 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 and prepare fire. Every day, every day, the same. Anyways, so they cry out to him, and he says, okay, I'm going to take care of it. He went out, and he was crying to Hashem, he found a corner that he could cry out to Hashem. Hashem, Hashem, you see my situation? The community helped me here and there. But this guy was so modest. He was so uh, humble. People didn't really know his situation. So here and there he would get maybe some help. But he was not on the list of people to help. And he says, Hashem, you know, it's not the fault of these people. They don't know me. I'm trying to hide myself and my actions. Um, but I need your help. He was crying and crying and crying. Till Midat Hadin, the tribute of judgment, rose. And Hashem wants to punish the entire city for ignoring from such a tzaddik. Eliyahu Navi came before Hashem and says, let me handle it. I want, let me do this mitzvah of saving this city. Eliyahu Navi came to him. And Eliyahu Navi, Eliyahu the prophet, Elijah, is still coming till today. And they're disguising themselves in many ways. So he appears before Rabbi, this rabbi, this poor guy. And he says, uh, Rabbi, can I talk to you? He says, yes, yes, of course, how can I help you? He says, you know, people here in the city ignoring me. Eliyahu Navi said that to him. Ignoring me, they're too busy. And I could not find a place to be on Passover. Can I join you to be with you on Passover? The guy says, absolutely, that will be my, it's, it's an honor. Please. Eliyahu Navi says, Oh, wow, thank you so much. I'm so happy. You know, I have here some money to give you. Please use this money. Uh, that's my mean hug. If I go somewhere, I'm giving... Uh, just buy food without for all of us. 
And this tzaddik said to him, no, I can, can't take and I won't take your money from you. Never, ever. Chaz v'shalom. Eliyahu Navi told him, uh, that's my condition. If I come to you, that's my mitzvah. Don't take my mitzvah for away from me. He pushed him and he pushed him. He pressed the right button and he says, okay, I'll take it. Uh, just tell me, the day I need to pick you up, where from and, and, and what's your name? And they says, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm around here. I'm going to be, you see me here around here. And my name is Rabbi Nisim Hamitzri. Uh. Okay? Nisim is, um, Nisim is related to miracles. miracles yeah. And Mitzri, Mitzrayim, the miracles of Egypt. Correct? So what is Rabbi Nisim Hamitzri? Rabbi Nisim Hamitzri told them, that's it. That day came. But before that, he went home, he showed them the bunch of money. He said, this is more than we need. They bought the best food, and they bought a lamb, and they prepared it, and wine, and grape juice, and candies, rice, potatoes, uh, vegetables, fruits, and, and, and things they could never even dream. He says, this guy gave me so much, I have to make sure he'll be happy. And special matzot, everything was ready. The eve of Pesach, our tzaddik is hanging around. Can't find them. So he started to ask people, did you see Rabbi Nisim Amitri? He said, who? <laughs> Rabbi Nisim Amitri. No. Did you see him? Did you see him? He went from store to store in the market, from place to place. He was not, he, he, this tzaddik is not hanging in these places, but he was asking people around. No one heard this word, this name before. He says, no one knows where it is. Then he figured that the guy that came before him was not a human being. He says, when he came to me and talked to me, I noticed that he has some special lights around him. I could not think at that time that this guy is Eliana V. I knew it's a special guy. I accept him immediately to be my guest. It was honor. So you can understand that he, he understand that he was uh, Eliyahu Navi, and with the leftover money that he has, he, he had much bracha, much blessing, success, and he become uh, a person uh, that was able to uh, support his family for many, many years after that, with that money. But, at that night, Saturday night, after everybody finished, they went to sleep, the midnight, of course. What time did you finish Seder night last night, last year? After two? From the night, right? They went to, right? After two? And, uh, they went to sleep, and all of a sudden, the rabbi of this city, the head rabbi, feels that he's choking during his sleep. <coughs> he can't breathe. <coughs> he wakes up, and he see a human being standing uh, with him, next to him, and choking him what? during the night. And he started to struggle, struggle. What are you doing? Leave me alone. And the guy says to him, this is your last day on earth. Finish. You're the sacrifice. You're the korban of this city. You what did I do wrong? He says, there is a tzaddik among you and you didn't take care of him? You ignored him! The rabbi understand this is not a human being. This is someone that came from the other world. And then said, let me speak. He says, just give me your name. I'll take care of him. I didn't know. I have a list. I know everybody's on my list. I didn't know. He says, well, you have to make extra efforts to see that no one is neglected. No one stay behind. And he says, I promise. I'm shortening, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, the, the whole story. So he added his name to the list. The rabbi shared this information with the entire city, and this is how this story became famous about Rabbi Nisim HaMitzri. The, the mitzvah is to light a candle from the month, the Rosh Chodesh Nisan, which is, we said, uh, uh, April 8th, right? Candle, when you light the candle, you say it's for the sake of Lichvot, the honor of Rabbi Nisim HaMitzri. You do that, it's a remedy, it's a segula 
for Parnasa. You're bringing this power of Eliyahu to you so you can enjoy uh, the abundance that Eliyahu Navi brought with him. So some do it only at the Rosh Chodesh and some light candles and this is the proper way to do to light the candles through the entire month for, not the entire month from the beginning of the month Rosh Chodesh till the end of the holiday okay till we finish the holiday of Pesach of Passover okay so we're talking almost almost it's almost the entire month okay give it a minus yeah minus few days Thank you, Rabbi Shimon. We have to jump off now. That was a beautiful story. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. I'm going to share with you Bye. more sgulot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to share with you more sgulot and more great stories in our next class. God bless you for coming. Remember, two sgulot we learned today. Haircut. Started that Erev Rosh Chodesh. Evil Rosh Chodesh. And lighting a candle. You can use a small candles. Don't have to be the one. They were white man that they called table uh, candles, right? You just buy a bunch of them. Light the candles. Every time you do that, say for the sake of Olichvot, for the honor of Rabbi Nisim Amitzri. Okay? And obviously you can do that on Shabbat. You do it before Shabbat. And Saturday night. Whenever you light candles for the Yom Tov. Add one for Rabbi Nisim Amitri. Do it before you light the candles of Shabbat. Before you light the candles for Yom Tov. Okay, just five minutes before or something like that. And Bezhat Hashem, Hashem will bring upon you uh, a lot of blessing, a great parnasa, a great livelihood. So your table will never be lack. You'll always be able to pay all your bills. And you'll be able to save a lot of money for the future of your children and family. And God bless you with joy in your life always. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Oh Heavens Royal Foundation, I want to thank you. I want to thank all those who supported with Sedaka for Matanos La Evionim on Purim. God bless you. God see everything you do and all the efforts you're making. And God will pay you a thousand times more. Amen.